The TV show SpongeBob SquarePants is not what you think it is. This seemingly virtuous city bikini bottom is an analogy of something insidious. The Seven Deadly Sins. This show covers seven main characters that carry the worst sins in history and behind it all is a mastermind that keeps it a secret. Today I will reveal the truth about this malicious cartoon. Trust me when I tell you I think this is my most convincing theory yet. This is the 7 Deadly Sins Theory. Spongebob has been my all-time favorite TV show ever since I started watching it. I always remember coming home from school to just kick back, relax, and watch Spongebob Squarepants on cable TV. Those were the days. The TV show sticks out for the comedy and deep meaning. Spongebob Squarepants has been famous for the dark and evil conspiracy theories and after all your support I decided to make another awesome theory. Today I'll talk about the 7 deadly sins that are actually alive in Bikini Bottom and how each of the main characters and Spongebob Squarepants are infested with each of these sins and I'm willing to prove it. You might be asking me what are the seven deadly sins. Let me explain. The seven deadly sins are a list of seven sins that are perceived as immoral behaviors that are based off of Christian tradition. The seven deadly sins consist of slot, greed, envy, pride, lust, gluttony, and wrath. These sins are outright sinister and believe it or not but Steven Hillenburg must have deliberately assigned each of the main characters to make the TV show more interesting and secretly dark. Spongebob Squarepants is the first ever TV show in history to ever portray these sins and attach them to each of the main characters which includes Spongebob, Plankton, Gary, Squidward, Patrick, Sandy, Mr. Krabs, and more. Nickelodeon is indirectly supporting this theory by making each of the characters personalities revolve around these sins, meaning that these seven characters are literally the sins. Let's begin with Spongebob. He is assigned with lust. The definition of lust is a strong desire of love or sexual desire. Spongebob is a character that loves everything in Bikini Bottom from the Krabby Patty found in the Krusty Krabs to the neighbors. He loves his job to the absolute extreme and cares about all living things in Bikini Bottom. He even loves people that hate him like Squidward. No matter how much Squidward hates Spongebob, he does not understand Squidward's hate and fights back with love. I understand that God wants peace on earth but the lengths that Spongebob takes to show his love are off the charts. Huh? Especially you, Squidward. In the episode Dying for a Pie, Spongebob literally gets so excited to see Squidward that he follows him on the window. In the episode 20,000 Patties Under the Sea, he says bye to Squidward twice and when Patrick questions him, he straight up says, I like Squidward. Bye Squidward! Bye Mr. Krabs! Bye Squidward. He said bye Squidward twice. I like Squidward. For some strange reason, my gut tells me that Spongebob is sexual, but the childhood part of me doesn't want to admit it. Uh, I was just looking for the sports channel, Gary. The whole reason SpongeBob moved into the pineapple was so he could live with Squidward. It's beautiful. I'll take it. I'm sure you're creeped out by now and I am as well. His love for everything is so bad that his brain is under a psychological force which causes a strong desire to love everything this planet has to offer. Although Spongebob is not likely sexual at all, I would like to mention that there is one character that very accurately illustrates lust and that is Pearl. I have a fun question for you. What's the deal with Pearl's extreme love for men? Pearl is Mr. Krabs' whale daughter who attends high school in Bikini Bottom. She's the age of about 16, which is a common age to fall in love. But I believe that Pearl is a bit too sexual for her age. In the episode Bossy Boots, Pearl offers to help her dad with the restaurant and wants to rename the Krusty Krab. She advised to rename it to the Kissy Krabs with a very strange kissing act. The new name for our new look. I mean the Krusty Crab has got to go. How about 
about the chaotic crab? Hmm, how about the kissy crab? <laughs> she goes beyond the line and shows us how much lust she has for boys who cry in the episode Whale of a Birthday. It's all about you. It's all about you, girl. On your 16th birthday, you'll get your very own spotlight tonight. Cause it's all about you. Yeah, it's all about her. Squidward mentioned that they charge a million dollars just to show up, and for some reason, Pearl doesn't seem to care about the cost. Boys who cry, they're my favorite band. They charge a million dollars just to show up. If you want them to lip sync, it'll run into real money. She is so deranged that she had dreams of them. I believe that this dream was much more deep than what Nickelodeon is showing us to make it more desirable for children. Sandy. She is assigned with pride. The definition of pride is a feeling of deep pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's own achievements. The achievements of those with one whom is closely associated or from qualities or possessions that are widely admired. Sandy is a character who thinks she's better than everyone in Bikini Bottom. In the episode Pressure, she kept arguing with the Krusty crew saying that land critters are much better than sea critters. That land critters are better than sea critters. She says land creatures are best. We're best at horse riding and first island and rowing. She keeps showing off her inventions to people around the town. She also has a very high level of self-esteem which means to value yourself above normal level. She has glory on her inventions and feel like she doesn't need anybody. To make matters intense, the episode Texas shows us a lot about who Sandy is as a person. In this episode, Sandy misses Texas and feels homesick. Sandy brags about being from Texas so much that when Patrick and Spongebob said Texas is dumb, it triggered Sandy as if she cannot take any criticism. What did you say? Texas is dumb. Don't you dare take the name of Texas in vain! No! You can't say nothing about Texas! She also tries to relate everything with Texas. Back in Texas, we call ice cream frozen cow juice. Excuse me for a sec. Hi I wouldn't be surprised if SpongeBob found a cure to cancer and Sandy says the cure of cancer was already created in Texas. Sandy always wants to be perfect in every possible way. She cannot accept failure in life since she wants to prove herself as the best creature in Bikini Bottom. In addition, I would like to add Squilliam Fancy Son. Squilliam's role in the TV show is to brag his wealth and status to his rival from high school band class, Squidward Q Tentacles. Hello, <gasps> Squilliam Fancy Son from band class? He constantly tries to publicly humiliate Squidward for his economical status. In the episode House Fancy, he literally broadcasts a house tour on TV to show Squidward what he's all about. Hello and welcome one and all to a super special episode of House Fancy. In the end of Band Geeks, he passes out for seeing his enemy win. Squilliam can't stand Squidward taking his perfectionism spot. He seems more pride hungry than Sandy Cheeks. Patrick. Patrick is considered a nothing professional which shows us all that he is assigned to slot. The definition of slot is reluctance to work or make an effort. Patrick is the laziest character in SpongeBob SquarePants. He does nothing but sleep under a rock. <laughs> he eats all the time. And his house is made out of sand which proves us that no dedication was made whatsoever. He doesn't work nor have any responsibilities in life. He's so lazy that in the episode Big Pink Loser he got an award for doing nothing more than anybody else. For doing absolutely nothing longer than anyone else? Patrick! This trophy's for you! No, in Bikini Bottom, excellence can be found even under a rock. He doesn't earn anything and uses Spongebob for all his food and money. He can't even make the littlest efforts in life like making breakfast. Squidward Squidward is a character that is heavily affected by sadness and hate towards everything and everyone except him and his clarinet. He prefers isolation over anything else that a normal person prefers. Squidward is known for having anger over little things like laughter and working at the Krusty Krab. His anger is so intense that his head heats up when Spongebob shows up. <laughs> Squidward, you're steaming. You're like a steamed vegetable, only smarter. If that's not surprising, Squidward even sang a song saying, I hate people, people hate me. I hate people, people hate me. I prefer my own best company. Squidward is assigned to rat. 
The definition of wrath is extreme anger. Gary. Gary is assigned to gluttony. The definition of gluttony is habitual greed or excess in eating. Gary is the hungriest pet in Bikini Bottom. He constantly demands Spongebob for food. He can eat a mountain load of snail food in half a second. You might be thinking Patrick is hungry, but Gary tops Patrick's position since Spongebob always uses food to reel in Gary. In one of the episode treats, Spongebob brought a treat for Gary called Snail Bites which Gary is hooked onto them and is ready to perform any task just to have this treat. Maybe snail bites contain drugs which is perfect to define Gary as gluttony. When Spongebob ran out of snail bites, Gary kept meowing for the rest of the episode. He was selfish enough to make Spongebob travel around the whole world just to find them. Gary is known for his overeating and always after food and nothing else. Gary even dumped Spongebob for the cookie in Patrick's pocket which is the biggest backstab in the show. It's what Gary wants and what Gary wants is me! Right Gary? No Patrick! He wanted the cookie in your pocket! You know who else stands for gluttony? Mrs. Puff. Mrs. Puff is known to eat more than an average fish. She's a puffer fish which are well known for their gigantic size. In the episode Prank A Lot, she's seen eating a double dark deep sea diet cake. Double dark deep sea light diet cake? Oh, you will soon be mine. Notice the part diet? Yes. Mrs. Puff is dieting. Maybe because of her obesity. I mean, she literally ate an apple in one whole bite. Give her the apple. Here you go, ma'am. <laughs> Seems like she's abusing the art of eating. Puffer fish are also known as higher competitive predators, which could mean that she could be eating fish in Bikini Bottom. And what if I told you that Mrs. Puff's relationship with Mr. Krabs is an excuse to eat him? In the episode Feral Friends, Neptune's moon devolves the whole city, causing all creatures to be primitive fishes. <laughs> We are shown that Mrs. Puff was eating Mr. Krabs, which could mean that she is using Mr. Krabs for food. Unaware he is being stalked by his natural predator, the pufferfish. Oh no you don't! Plankton. Plankton is assigned to envy. The definition of envy is desire to have quality possession or other desirable attributes belonging to someone else. Plankton is full of jealousy and can't bear to see Mr. Krabs' success. He is the owner of a failing restaurant called the Chum Bucket and is willing to take any chance that he gets to steal the Krabby Patty secret formula so he can instantly retrieve all of Krabs' success. Plankton is extremely obsessed with having power and rule the world which belongs to everyone. Instead of making his own recipe, he wants to acquire the hard work of others. I mean the guy literally ruined a friendship just because of jealousy. This obsession of power has destroyed him from inside and permanently changed his mindset. Last but not least, Mr. Krabs. Mr. Krabs is assigned to greed. The definition of greed is intense or selfish desire for something, especially wealth, power, or food. Mr. Krabs is the owner of a multi-million dollar restaurant that generates millions of dollars a year. He is the greediest man in Bikini Bottom and wants to acquire all the wealth available. Selfish enough to empty his mom's wallet when she collapses. Oh dear mother! What are these foul mouth heathens done to you? <laughs> he has nightmares of losing money and can't stop thinking about money. He underpays both of his employees and would sell out a loved one for a quick buck. He'd sell your soul for a couple of bucks. If you had to choose between SpongeBob and all the money I have in my pocket, which would you take? 62 cents. I take the money. This Krabs always shows up for free stuff. He keeps collecting money and never gets satisfied with all of his earnings. I mean there's a limit on making money and this money hungry greed is destroying Mr. Krabs. He's the type of person to reach the party late without a gift and leave the party after the food. This greed runs inside his blood and is taking full control. And if you guys thought that was dark, boy I have something for you. This is where I originally planned to end the theory but I found something that is very, very convincing. This is where the dark part of the theory begins.
So now we know that these main characters possess the seven deadly sins. There is still one question that comes across my mind. Who brought the seven deadly sins to Bikini Bottom and why? Well, it's quite simple. Who seems like the most evil spirit in Bikini Bottom? Who is miserable and unable to live his life? The Flying Dutchman. The Flying Dutchman is very evil. I mean, when he appears, everybody gets scared shitless. <laughs> He steals people's souls and threatens to lock up anyone who upsets him in Davy Jones' locker. And I'll let you in on a little secret. I'm going to steal your soul. I'm here to escort you to the resting place of all bad undersea folk. Davy Jones' locker. I think he trades physical items for the souls of bikini bottom fishes. If that doesn't convince you, then what explains the soul bag he carries around? Did you know that the Flying Dutchman is the underwater version of the devil? I mean, just like the Flying Dutchman, the devil also takes people's soul. Which means that he purposely assigned these evil sins to the main characters, but why? What is the reason behind it? Do you really want to know? He is trying to destroy King Neptune's underwater world so that he could take King Neptune's throne. King Neptune is a god of the sea that has magical powers, a wife, and kids, and also a handsome physique. Neptune is living his best life in a Greek mansion. On the other hand, the Flying Dutchman is an old grumpy man who died thousands of years ago and lives alone on a dirty old pirate ship. In the episode Squidward the Unfriendly Ghost, Spongebob told Patrick a story about the origin of the Flying Dutchman. He said that he haunts the seven seas because he was never put to rest. It says when he died, they used his body as a window display. Now he haunts the seven seas because he was never put to rest. It's understandable that the Flying Dutchman would envy the success of King Neptune and command the Bikini Bottom main characters to destroy the beautiful things in life. This theory proves that the main characters of Spongebob Squarepants corresponds to the seven deadly sins. The Flying Dutchman is responsible for the seven deadly sins and that Nickelodeon is secretly hiding the sinister message in the show. The case is closed. And that's the seven deadly sins theory. I can't believe how evil Bikini Bottom really is. I just think this TV show is outright crazy. Who would have thought the Flying Dutchman was secretly behind the sinister found in Bikini Bottom? Anyways, that was a fun and thrilling theory. We recently hit 8,000 subscribers and I wanted to thank you all for the support. If you guys keep subscribing, we might even get the YouTube play button, which would be really sweet. There are more theories on the way, so I highly recommend to stay tuned. With that being said, please check out my other other amazing theories where I uncover the meaning behind a character and an episode. Thanks for watching the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe to never miss another theory.